With over 200 videos on the channel, this is the first time that I've ever felt bad about giving a lower score. Today we're going to take a full tour and talk about the good and that bad and why. So let's get into it. Welcome to Uluwatu. If you'd like to know the exact rate that I paid for my stay or my next five videos in queue, please check out the description below. And if you're new here, hi there and welcome to the channel. My name is Kevin. I think that the world needs a bit more honest travel content these days, so I make airline trip reports, high-end hotel reviews, and cruise ship tours as well, all without invitation. I always film without the company's knowledge and I self-fund my trips to be sure I get a true experience. Then I give you nothing more than my own personal, honest, unbiased opinion. Okay, first of all, let's get our priorities straight. Can we just take a moment for this glorious shag dash? Thank you. So, now we're on our way through the back roads of Uluwatu to the channel's first Anantara. This is a brand that I've been chasing for quite some time since the channel began. The reason I haven't featured one yet is pretty simple. I only book refundable rates and I have a rule of not paying more than 20% over the non-refundable rate for that luxury. Anantara is one of the few brands in my research that has consistently had a 40% or higher spread until I found the Anantara Uluwatu. From the first arrival and lingering throughout, I, I do have to say that there is something about this hotel's design that just isn't right. It just doesn't fit Bali. And it's it, it's not like one of those generic big box designs. It certainly has a point of view, but it gives me more four star Acapulco vibes instead of the five star Bali vibes that you would expect. That said, the setting really is stunning. The one thing here that is Bali to its core though, is the service. This is the very reason why I feel bad about today's score. Truly, from top to bottom, meaning from the general manager down to the laundry guy, the service here is the friendliest and the most welcoming that I think I've ever had. I don't think I felt this welcome in a place since I traveled through Iran. And that's not sarcasm at all, by the way. That was the most friendly country I've ever been to. You know me. I'm the low-touch service guy. I'm not the one that will be into the reviews about arriving as strangers and leaving as family. But if ever there was a place that that could be true, it would be here. The only problem is, they've got a basket full of facility issues. And the layout and design is just weird. And it's not cheap. If my room was like $200 a night, this would be a very different tone and a very different review. But I paid a lot more than $200. So let's head downstairs towards the coastline for a bit. From the jump, let me be loud and clear, this hotel is not, I repeat not, for those with mobility issues, period. There are a lot of steps here, and your Fitbit is going to be getting its own workout. The main building that we just left is where the majority of the rooms are, as well as the gym, reception, and the 360 rooftop restaurant, and the teppanyaki restaurant as well. During my stay though, and this did weigh pretty heavily on my score, both of those restaurants were closed for renovations. So they said. Anantara is owned by Minor Hotel Group, quite the underwhelming name if you ask me. They currently have 56 resorts, mostly in Asia, with the first Anantara having opened back in 2001 in Hua Hin, a beach town to the south of Bangkok. In 2018, they also purchased NH Hotels and also own the Avani brand, both of which I've already featured on the channel.
This Anantara was opened in 2012 and has 72 rooms in total, many of them being pool villas which you can see here, and there were major renovations done, I think mostly to the rooms, in 2019. Okay, let's take a better look at where we are. Off the east coast of Java, Bali is Indonesia's Hindu-majority island and tourist hotspot. The vast majority of the population and tourist facilities are located in the southern third of the island, and today we are in the southern third of that, just about as far south as you can get in Uluwatu. One nice thing about being on this coast of Uluwatu, as opposed to being on the southern coast such as the Six Senses Uluwatu which I reviewed last year, linked above and below, is that here you get sunsets straight in front of you. You don't need to look around the corner, around the cliff, on the bar, outside over the ledge. The property itself is pretty compact, set on a cliff, and uses up just about every square inch of space possible. Now we're walking through some of the, let's call them, villa corridors. One thing to note, Bali gets its fair share of rain, and there are really not that many covered walkways here. Just ahead of us is the Wedding Pavilion, and as we turn back we can get a better look of the main hotel structure itself. Let's head back up there now and go check out my room. I'm not sure what feeling you're getting, but let me tell you this. When I stayed here, I did not know that it was built in 2012, and I had no idea about the 2019 renovations. I generally keep myself in the dark about such things, as it gives me fresher eyes to observe. While I was here, I would have guessed, based on the overall design and the layout of the structure, that it was built in the 70s, and had, in the past 10 years or so, had a major renovation. The fact that this full resort is only 11 years old is kind of hard to believe. In fact, before writing this script, I checked that fact from like eight different sources just to be sure. So here's my room, an ocean view suite. This oversized layout is the standard room size and overall I actually did really like the room. Some of the colors weren't exactly giving it refreshing or authentic Bali vibes, let's say, but the room itself was very comfortable and I can see how this would be a great room for a family with a few kids. The only spot in the room that felt fairly dated to me was the bathroom. This trip was around Easter time, and while it's certainly not something I was expecting, the hot cross buns were a welcome touch and frigging delicious. The mini bar was well stocked with espresso pods and an assortment of teas along with plastic bottled water and a very organized cooler of chargeable drinks. Plenty of room in the closet, but I can't stand these tri-slide doors which only allow one third open at a time, and nothing budged if your safe was open. There were also some other really unexpected touches, like a full-on Bose sound system in each room. Each side of the bed had outlets and light switches integrated into the nightstand, and there was a nicely sized writing desk. If you support the content that I've been putting out, or you hate the content but your therapist told you to be nicer, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe. 
Those are the two easiest ways that you can tell YouTube that this video was worth your time. For anyone interested in supporting, my Patreon is also linked in the description below. Thanks for watching today. As I mentioned, the bathroom was a bit dated and a really odd layout, with a double separated vanity flanked on either side by the toilet room and the shower. It's been a while since I've seen a bathroom with so much unnecessarily wasted space without giving it the sense of actually feeling bigger. Amenities on offer were unbranded in bulk non-tamper proof bottles. A few of the fixtures and boxes had a few scratches or dings here and there, but on the whole, the condition was good and in the room in general was spotlessly clean. Then we have the great oversized balcony, which has its own hot tub, a more or less standard fixture at all of the rooms here, except perhaps those with their own pools. So who is staying here? It is mostly couples, safe to say that there was no one here over 50 while I was here. Just a few families with younger kids. I got the feeling that the majority of the guests here were either in the pool villas and maybe didn't leave their rooms all day, or in the other extreme, this was their base to sleep while they just explored Uluwatu. Heading further downstairs, we make our way to the primary tiered swimming pool. By the way, if you're new to the channel, I've got a new playlist linked above and below which has about 15 or so videos which will give you a pretty good idea of what the channel is all about. Feel free to take a look at it. This whole area down here though does feel like it needs a bit of TLC though. I mean, can, can we take a look at these lounge chair coverings? In a former life, like seven lives ago, all of these towels were maroon. Then at the cliff's edge we have the Boltel Biru Bar and Grill, which is meant to be a Mediterranean restaurant. But with it being the only venue open during my stay, things were a bit haphazard. So, the resort does not really have access to the beach. 
Allegedly, there is a narrow strip of actual beach down there, and there is an elevator that is part of the hotel, but that's been out of service for quite some time. I've read that there is a way to get down to the beach next to the resort itself, but I'm sorry, cliff climbing is not in my job description, so I can't comment on that too much. I will say though, this hotel does steer clear of advertising that they have a beach of their own. Strangely enough, staff were walking around with mini chicken satays as the sun was setting. Certainly a novel approach, but it, it was tasty. So this is the menu that I wish that I was having tonight, full of Indonesian specialities, as would be served at the 360 restaurant way upstairs. But I was limited to down here. This is the bar level with the restaurant above. I didn't really notice this when I was there, but as I'm looking at the restaurant seating area now, it's giving me a lot of, wow, I found this amazing hostel in Uluwatu for only $9 a night vibes. For dinner, there was a limited buffet available. So first of all, the restaurant staff were super nice and accommodating. I briefly just explained that I wasn't really looking for a buffet and it looked like I broke the server's heart just a little bit. He brought me the a la carte menu, which looked an awfully lot like the buffet itself, but just for what would be a lot more money when ordering a la carte. So the buffet it was. There were a few soups, salads, and side dishes, and all of the meats were then grilled to order in small portions. Credit where credit is due, all of the meat and fish was actually really good. And frankly, the server couldn't have done more for me. The next step would have been him likely sitting down next to me and cutting my food up into bite-sized pieces. So yeah, it, it was tasty, but a five-star resort buffet, it most certainly was not. The next morning, I kept trying to get a shot of the gym inside the gym, but there were quite a few, let's say, intense guests in there. So I ended up just swiping a pic instead. Breakfast was at the same restaurant as dinner, and it, it was fine. In case you didn't notice, that was not the most enthusiastic, it was fine. Again, great service and great coffee. But this is just not what I was expecting for my first Anantara experience. Part of that is likely to do with the fact that this restaurant is not meant to be a buffet to begin with. Can I just mention one thing which applies to all of my reviews these days? Let's just say, for the sake of argument, that COVID, as it applies to hotels, you know, restrictions, closures, staffing issues, is over in my mind. Are there still staffing issues across the globe in hospitality? Absolutely. But I think the reasons for that go much deeper than a lack of candidates. So my point being, any video that I have filmed in 2023 onwards, if a venue was closed during my stay, but it's open now, or a beach was dirty during my stay, but it's clean now, or anything else that can change from the time when I stayed until the time when I published my video, in this post COVID world, I fully believe that it's all fair game for one very simple reason. If it happened to me unexpectedly during a time when it wasn't necessary, it might happen to you as well. And it's something that you might want to seriously consider when choosing a hotel for your vacation. So I really do want to say that I like it. I really wish I could say that I recommend it, but I, I just don't. My score for the price that I paid in Bali, Honestly, it should be even a little bit lower, but I just couldn't do it. The service was just so fantastic that the score is just going to stand where it is. All of that being said, I really do hope that you did enjoy this video today and perhaps find it useful. If you did, please be sure to click that thumbs up button and subscribe so you don't miss out on any of my upcoming content. I'll see you next time on my flight on Cathay Pacific from Jakarta to Hong Kong in business class. Oh, and thanks for watching till the end.